in Africa. I'm saying this because we have been meeting as a humanity, you know, in all these COP20, COP whatever, until the other day it was COP28. But it looks like you have a different perspective on climate change. Your take. My, good evening, listeners. My name is Dan Kasiva. I come from Tungamo. The question about climate change, we have to ask ourselves, is what is climate change? That's a very simple question. But all of you need to differentiate what they call environmental degradation and effects of, of environmental degradation and climate change. Because you cannot tell me that there's climate change and there was floods in Dubai. It's a desert. It doesn't have any rain. What did that? We are told the Dubai thing was a, a result of cloud seeding. Okay, so what are the effects of cloud seeding in the ecosystem of the global world? We have to understand... The, the, the flood is in Dubai. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. So where did the humidity come from? You have to understand that the world is almost a closed system. You understand? That's like how you eat food and it goes out somewhere. So let me, yes. let, let me, let me put it like this, Anthony, uh, uh, Dan Kasiba. Yes. When uh, the world leaders meet, like the other day they met in, in Scotland, in Glasgow, they met in Shamal Sheikh, they met in Dubai, yes. they have called them the, the, the conference of parties. Yes. Are all these people get it wrong? Yes, because you cannot tell me that you are COP28, you care, care about the environment, and you have around 200 private jets flying to meet, talk about the environment, polluting the environment. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. The emission footprint of those jets, private jets. This is one of the worst one emitters. One of the worst emitters. That we know. You cannot tell me that you care about climate change, and you don't even investigate the Nord Stream pipelines that were blown up. They, it's the biggest emission in the world, more than oil spillages and all of that. And you can dispute it, but the data is there. You can read it if you have time. But for us who have read it, can tell you that that is, there's no So, way so in, in your view, Dan, where should uh, people, our countries that right now have energy poverty, yes. what should they be doing? What, well, how, what should be their interaction uh, with the multinationals, the World Bank, the IMF, the so-called humanitarian, uh, uh, you know, supporters? So, first of all, is that we should not follow the agenda that is set by people who do not understand our people. You cannot tell me that uh, you are waiting for Europeans to come and tell you that they, you should protect your environment. So, that is what we are doing. We are following what they are telling us. Instead of looking at our environment and protecting it. Me, in, uh, I think in, in 2012, that's when I started understanding that there's weather changes and effects of that. That's why I decided to choose to do something related to environment change. I did it alone. I didn't want anyone to tell me because I love, I'm a farmer. I'm a son of a peasant. So I understand the problems that happen in my in my small village in, in Tungamo, in Kachizi, whereby we can no longer have the, those two seasons. As, and for us, we, are, we, we depend on milk to sell and all of that. So I understand that. But what they were telling me is not what I found. Because all these countries that maybe have gotten exposed to, they have higher energy density. There's no, there's no country there that doesn't have nuclear systems to generate at least base load energy. But you cannot tell me that we should use solar and wind as our alternative sources, given that the problems we have here of deforestation can be solved by high energy densities from u nuclear. If we shift schools, institutions, and all of that, and all this where mo most people are, and sh shift their cooking systems at least to electricity and all of that, or maybe use something else, but not firewood, would, would re rejuvenate our environment far, far much better than having every house in Uganda with solar. Because you, you have to understand that solar, uh, it's made of toxic components, silicon, like them. We don't have uh, uh, what they call, I've forgotten, like collection systems after they are done. Mm -hmm. So we have, to, we have to dispose them off. They are a huge risk to the environment. Battery systems itself, lithium ion batteries and all of that, we know they affect people in DRC Congo. We all know the, the mining of lithium, yes, the, the, the of, mining. The rare, of the of the rare of the of the rare earth minerals. You see what is happening there, you will cry. Mm. You will be like an African. What is wrong with you? Because many people are saying the Democratic Republic of Congo is the next Saudi Arabia because the new technologies are going to be powered by the rare minerals which are yes, gotten in the Congo. But, but if I cared about the environment, I would have built industries there. I would have protected 
followed what the United Nations agenda says. Stop child la uh, laboring, stop sex slavery and all of that. All of those things happen as a result of militias and corporate institutions out there wanting minerals. So, 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 so look, yes, you're saying, you're saying that, that to have a higher energy density, yes. you need to have, um, you know, maybe nuclear and other. But yes. look, we, if, we, if we invested as a country yes. on, on, on the hydro, yes. The, the Nile, the Kageras, yes. the, oh, you but know, destroying the, 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 no, the Nile and the Kageras have the capacity no, 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 to are, give us... No, 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 you are destroying an ecosystem because you have to understand that all these falls, the ecosystems that you're talking about, the ecological systems, we have habitats of animals, you understand? You put a fall because you're going, you're, if you're going to, uh, to, to, to build a, a hydro dam, you're going to go on a fall. On a, like a fall, like yes. Within. So then you are going to kill that. So there are a lot of things that you hydro itself. There's, there's something you have to lose to gain something. I mean, that, yeah, that that's but, understandable. But then what makes it because there's there isn't going to be there isn't going to be an energy form yeah. that is absolutely risk-free or doesn't have any negative impact. Yes. Those, if, if, I mean, you know what happened in Chernobyl. That's what I. You know what happened in Chernobyl in die, Ukraine. Then what you're saying is that let, let the poor die. In 1996. No, I'm in Chernobyl. No, no, if you say that we follow what they are telling us, so it means the poor will never be able to afford the costs of energy in the next 10 years. Right now, our forest cover uh, last night was said it's around 9.5 percent. We lost it from, uh, sorry, 8.3, 8. Point something percent. We lost, we lost 5 percent from 2015. So, in the next 10 years, we shall not have firewood. Where will you? How will you cook? How will the poor cook? Oh, you think that you will have eradicated poverty in Uganda? So, so let, let me find out. It looks like you are declaring war or, on even what we have known as clean energy, and that is hydro, hydroelectricity. No, 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 no. no. Hydro, hydro is, is, is clean energy. I yeah, agree. Yeah. But, and, the, but, but there is, if, look, yeah. the Grand the Ethiopian, Ethiopian, Re the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, yes, 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 the same yes. Nile, yes. are producing 6,000 megawatts yes, 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 on, this, on the Nile. Yes. Our biggest is going to be Karuma. Yes. It's giving us 600. Yes. The problem yes. is with the leaders in yes. Uganda. Yes that they are not able to harness the God-given gift yes. of the Nile. Yes. The Nile River yes. has the capacity to give us a higher energy density me, if we, if we, yes. if we develop the Nile. Yes. Me, and, and, then, and then you have the Kagera, no, 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 no. we have the Mpanga, no, 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 no. You, then we have the River Tanja and Answa. You, you know the amount of, of, okay, let me first remind you what the president of Uganda said in the United Nations meeting. I think it was in, uh, I think it was in 2008, around there when Barack Obama was chairing it, and he, he told them why we need nuclear. Because even if you add up all the, the, the energy that can be generated from all rivers around Africa, we, can, we will not be able to meet the energy demand in but, the next but, 10 years. But, but do, you know, do you know right now that we yes. have energy surplus? Yes, we know. Isn't that what they talk right yes, now? Yes, yes, yes. But and, 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 and when we only, when we only have three, yes. uh, three dams on the Nile, actually yes. two dams on yes, the Nile, yes, I agree. <laughs> on ginger I agree. and December. I agree. And with only ginger and December, yes. the president is telling us we have energy surplus. Wait, wait, so, wait. And yet, energy surplus, how many industries do you have? Well, that's according to what we have now, okay, now and our needs, we have more than we can, we can cater for yeah, the needs. But, but, but that doesn't mean that's, that what you have now is what you'll be demanding in the near future. Of, of course not, but, yes. but we, have only, we have only developed like 5% or less of what the Nile can offer in no, Uganda. No, 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 no. You have, you have killed many ecosystems to be able to develop what you've developed. You understand? What I'm giving you is that if you continue that, you'll kill many other systems. There is a solution for that. If we can be able to, I'm in support of collaborating with countries that can be able to develop nuclear. Under nuclear system, if you care about the environment, think about modernization of transport systems. That includes even switching. If you, if you put a metro system in Kampala, it can expand the city by far, far larger. You're making money out of it. It's not only that you can make money out of the metro system it's itself only, but you're expanding the city. It means there's no congestion. All those problems that you have of now, like flooding and all of these things, it is because you have poor infrastructure. But the, the question is that how does the poor infrastructure, congestion, how can it be solved? How does energy, how does energy solve the poor infrastructure and the congestion? Because, because now if you have metro systems, you don't need a lot of 
road constructions and all of that, you would have to or, to maybe alternatively use other uh, late other late trains and stuff like yes, that. Yes, yes, but, yes. But but but, but right now, but right now, right yes. now, mm. uh, Dan, we have we have enough energy yes. to be able to give us Why some of those things. about now? We are talking about 2030, 2035, 2040. Because now that it's not so far, it's seven years from now. You understand? You we already have we already have load shading. It's already there, right now when we have surplus, how about now if we start uh, pushing what they call big industries there's no country that can attract foreign direct investments without cheap electricity that's that's is true because yes, because the cost then, of the cost of doing business yes, is also determined yes. by the energy uh, the, the energy cost yes 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 but then let me ask you uh if the europeans come and tell you that uh, because of methane from cows you have to reduce the population of your cows what will you do Actually, that has also been approved in Brazil and, and Argentina that, 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 that the cows are also producing methane. Yes, methane yeah. is not the But the problem is not that methane is the problem. What, what is the problem? Have you read how they characterize... Uh, have they uh, shown you how they characterize these computations of knowing which, which has the greatest impact assessment? So they say methane has 25 times the effect of, of CO2. So they will justify with that. But then whose science is that? So now, let me, let me understand, because I think apart from South Africa, and yeah. maybe Egypt, yes. I don't think there are other countries in Africa, even South Africa that has more developed, by the way, has more poverty energy than any other. They have more load shedding than any other yeah, because, country because, on the continent, yes, despite I, of the fact that I think they yeah, even at one point had nuclear no, facility. No, 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 it was an agenda to shut down the nuclear systems. Now, you know, you know what they have? Energy poverty, the way you've said it. Yeah. So it confirms what I'm telling you. Before they never... Before they had the, before they shut down the nuclear systems, look at what uh, they they were maybe had energy, a lot of en energy. How about Germany? Germany now is burning coal. We all know that why it is burning coal. We are not going to ask questions. But uh, is that the way? Which is the most adaptive form yes, of yes, energy? Yes, yes, most adaptive. I mean, Germany this summer is uh, in energy surplus from solar. That's what they declared. But at the same time, when winter comes, they burn coal like nothing. So. Who's protecting the environment? Then, why should we be the ones to take up the responsibility of restoration of the environment when, oh, historically, we have not been polluting? We are emission-free, like we are the greenest. The but, but, but you know that? Because yeah. or every time they made in the COP, they supposed no, to no, compensate. No, no. Yeah, there was a $100 billion promised uh, promise from COP from, yeah, uh, from but Glasgow. You what William Ruto said? William Ruto told you that they made pledges. None has ever been fulfilled. The, what I'm trying to, what, what I'm also reminding you is that there has been an understanding that Africa's footprint in terms of emission is small, yes. Yes. and the world community has understood that. Yes. That's the reason why there was a pledge of 100 billion yes. to compensate yes. the countries that are getting the negative impact yes. of claim of, of, of emissions, yet they are producing little. That I has been understood, and there's been a commitment yes. to, to to pay. Is it about the commitment or is it about acting? If you are going to tell me that we're an environmentalist, me, that's why I consider my grandfather, Kasiva George, mm. the best environmentalist I've ever seen. That guy planted trees ever since I was kid, a kid. And it is us who are enjoying the trees. You understand? So that's what sustainability says. You have to do something, irrespective of you benefiting from it today. So are you suggesting, mm. are you suggesting there's yes. no relation yes. between how the environmental degradation that we have yes. right now yes. for example you come from western uganda yes. you know yes. uh, for example a city like imbarara yes. that had a river called ruizi which has become a trickle yes and and even kagera we yes. look at river kagera now that has come, become muddy yes the, the, that environmental degradation yes is not creating some form of, of climate change no the we cannot call it climate change we call it degradation of the environment okay you can call it whatever but the main point is that it is as a, an effect of human activities. So if we remove human activities, reduce human activities on River Kagera and all of that and the shores of that, we will have controlled the problem. But if you tell me that me having solar or wind on my house, that is how I will restore River Kagera, you are, you are lying. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. So it is that we are not, diso we are not saying that there's no shifts in weather and all of that, but the solutions they are giving us are not the solutions. You understand? Because you cannot tell me that with the targets of 20, Vision 2040, 2050, with what you read through the, the government and the public uh, websites, 
if they do not have a, a specific energy policy telling people on how their stores should be, on what they should anticipate in terms of energy expenses and all of that, then we're going to keep being uh, following other people's di directives. So that's what I'm trying to, to tell you. Dan Kasiba, energy specialist. We're going to take a break and the whole seat will be right back. The hottest debate on all relevant topics, live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. The K Drive. The K Drive. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Emeka, the romantic Matiga, with his rap, Indian guy. Hot seat. Hot seat. Hear the real story behind the story. Coming right at you. Only on 933 KFM. Welcome back to 933 KFM. And this is the hot seat. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is an energy specialist, Mr. Dan Kasiva. And we're talking about energy and uh, energy poverty in Africa. And he thinks we need to go nuclear. I, I know President Yoweri Museveni. Actually, there is even a whole... Uh, department, I think, in the Minister of Energy that is super focused on, on nuclear, even though, uh, in my view, they seem to be jokers, though, with all respect. Because I have not seen... I'm sure they have attended some meetings in Europe and Asia and all that, but maybe that's where it stops. But really, you know, you have to have people who have the technology to come and build it for you. And, and I've seen some countries that have struggled to be able to build even, you know, nuclear for peace, for energy. I, I, I can tell you countries like Iran and others have suffered. How are they likely to allow an African country with a, a history, with, with a tumultuous history and, and, and a trigger happy <laughs> to build a nuclear energy without the suspicion that it could be, it could turn into something different? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Let us rephrase it like this. Let us look at the, the options that we have, like nuclear, wind, solar and hydro, right? So we already understand that hydro has its own issues related for the ecology. Yes, you for think the ecology. we shall be yeah. committing ecological the, terror? Yeah, <laughs> the same the same with with uh, the wind wind farms because you have to understand that the the critical rare materials used to manufacture wind farms the their their deposits are like 90% controlled by China. So we are putting ourselves to the Chinese mercy. But also the problem with wind is that you are at the mercy of when the currents move. Mm -hmm. Also, wind, wind farms, like last year, a certain country, the Nord, Nord, Nordics, had, ha, has a six megawatt, a six gigawatt wind farm. It was only able to generate at 1.6 megawatts. You know what that is? It's like less than 1% of, of what they wanted. Then now let's go to nuclear. So now, we don't need to own the power plants. For us, what we need is electricity. So then, now the question is, how do you fund it? Now, the, 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 that's where the problem is. The problem is that we are waiting for people to pay for our development. Why should we do that? We are the ones developing. Then we expect the IMF to be the ones to approve the loans to, to develop ourselves. But at the same time, which African country have you seen develop in the last 60 years following the IMF model? No country. Which, you give me one. I will. <laughs> which country has been out of poverty? We can see China has done it in less than 20 years. Singapore did it in less than 20 years. What happened to Africa? Or maybe the problem is not with Africans. I don't know, but those are questions. So, so, so at the end of the day, um, the nuclear model, yes. to give you electricity, yes. you'd have to go to a country that is doing it, yes. and they, they, they will bill you, yes. and, and then and, and perhaps you'll find that you cannot even afford. No, 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 no. We can allow them to own them. We can give them 50 years of ownership. What's, what's wrong with that? So long as we agree on the prices and the costs of the electricity, let them operate it if they are, if the uh, international energy... So you think this should be like a, yes. an FDI, a foreign direct investment yes, 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 in South yes. Africa for them to make yes. money? Yes, all we need is electricity and energy. So, that so, so tell me, if, if, if uh, you think there's a business model yes. for the, the people who are specialized in building maybe many, many grids or of, 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 sol, of, of, of nuclear, yes. how come the whole of Africa, yes. nobody has attempted ah. to build that as a business model, as a foreign direct investment in Actually, an African country, Egypt because 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 energy is like a lifeline of a nation, no, really. No, no, no. Egypt is doing it. Uh, Mali is doing it, and also South Africa right now should be rethinking of developing more nuclear. It's only us that have been told that climate change is. Uh, you wait when they tell you that as a result of climate change, you have to kill your goats, you have to kill your cows. 
oh, you have to kill some people. So what will you, <laughs> what, what will you do? If they come and if, if, if you don't establish your own foundation of science, whereby you can oppose whatever everyone brings to you, you cannot tell me that, you know, the military industrial complex within the Western world, how many times they, they are bombing everywhere now. You, are you caring for the environment, really? Is that how you care for the environment? If, if, if the environment is a problem, then there are things that we shouldn't be able to see in certain countries. You understand? You, you, you seem to have, uh, uh, you have taken in too much. No, no, no. <laughs> no I looked at the, I've looked at the figures myself, mm -hmm. and the figures are horrible. In terms of, like, uh, a, a, a small country like Finland can power, like, seven countries in Africa without needing any, anywhere. Only using... Five million people, country of five million people can power, like, seven or nine countries in Africa without... So I, I've heard of factories that are, in fact, they actually call them the, the giga factories, yes. the, which are running on clean energy. Yes. I think one of them is, is in Texas, in the U.S., another one in German, yes. the, Tesla, uh, the Tesla giga factories. Yes, but uh, how do they become, and, and, and when I talk about giga, that's, yes. that's really massive. Yes. That's really, yes. it needs energy intensive, energy, higher energy consumption. Yes. But I'm told they're running on... on, on uh, they're, they're running on clean energy. Yeah, but have, haven't you seen? Uh, haven't you seen? Haven't you seen a report whereby the same California in 20, 2019 they ordered around 150 trucks of electricity of EV uh, like tow trucks, and they could, the grid couldn't support it. You know what they did? They had to tell them to stop. So that 100 and oh that giga factory, you have to understand it's an energy storage system. It's known. It's not entirely that it's generating uh, electricity. There's power generation and there is power storage. Yeah, but so, the, the power mm. is is produced clean energy no, 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 and then stored. No, 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 no. Okay, yes, I agree, I agree. Clean energy then stored. Yeah. But then, do you, do so, so that's a no, model. No, no, wait, 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 wait. That's, that's a model that is good for, wait, our, for wait, planet wait, Earth. Wait, wait, wait. That's what I'm trying to tell you is that you are shifting burdens from you consuming to where the minerals come from. You understand? To, so be able to build yes. those, to, to have those batteries. Yes, I yes, mean, yes, you'll have to go in the Congo and anywhere, Congo and, then, and, and, and then and then and, when they are reporting, and have child labor and stuff yes, like yes, that. Yes. That's that's when their they are concern. Reporting, mm -hmm. They will not tell you where they are coming from. And the the problem that comes with this this movement, all of it, is that how many companies, or how many African companies own these technologies? So it's like we are, we are shifting from this uh, current uh, slave system to another slave system. But the other one is going to be more dangerous because it will be telling you how you should eat your food and uh, which animals will live. And that's what I'm trying to warn you about. It's not that I'm here to tell you that what I'm trying to tell you to, to wake up and be able to understand what you're, 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 you're signing. That's all I need. Because as me, I'm a, a, a true activist of the environment because I, I love my village. You can go there and ask them. I love my village. I grew up on it. I know that I need it green. But what they are doing is not t taking us to that. So now, mm. we as Af Africans, as we as Ugandans, yes. have, uh, have committed our own ecological terror before we even uh, to point fingers at, to, to the, to the, at, across the northern hemisphere yes. because you have an example of rivers yes. that have disappeared. Yes. And these rivers have disappeared because we mm. have just done harm to ourselves. We are doing what I would call, uh, you know, we have put ourselves in a, in, in a self demolition mode how? because of how because of how we cook our food mm. because of how we farm we the wetlands have been destroyed by ourselves so you want people to starve no they don't have to starve yes, your grandfather your, 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 your father your father and yes. your grandfather have yes. been able to use environment in a sustainable manner yes. but most majority of Ugandans have moved away no i mean we are cooking we are using firewood We've been yes. using it. Yeah, been, it's there yes, but there's also been a sustainable way of using it, where but you just go in the forest and pick the all the, the, the dry wood and come and use it. Or yes. maybe you, or maybe you, you, maybe you, you plant a tree, your forest specifically for your energy needs. You know, and that's not what has been happening. I wanted to inform you that. But, but do you realize mm. that we have destroyed the environment yes. without pointing fingers, without pointing fingers, the northern no, hemisphere? I'm saying circumstantially, the, the circumstances that are there are going to degrade you to, to degrade the environment. You have to survive. You understand? I, that, that's something that people need to know. It's not that you, people destroy the environment because no, that's what they want. But you see, there have been indigenous knowledge. Yes. 
from your father and your grandfather. Yes. And people have been able to live off that environment in a sustainable manner. Yes. But other Ugandans, majority of them, yes. have not been able to do that. Yeah. And that is our biggest but, mistake. But yes, our mistake is within what we've educated our, our people. We've not educated them. We've not taught them. We are waiting for people to tell us what, what is environment, environment, climate change. And then that's when we start saying that that is climate change. We cannot, that's what, we, if you are to blame us, then blame about our systems that are not teaching our people the right things. That should be where you start from. You start from what, how did I miss this? The, the, there has, yeah, you, yes. I just want to admit yes. that before anybody points yes. fingers on yes. us, yes. On us yes. there has been a failure on our yes. own, our yes. leadership at a yes. local level, yes. to understand yes. that the way how we are doing business and how we are uh, yes. harnessing the environment yes. is putting us in a self-destructive destructive mode. Yeah, but, but, but it's not only us. It's not only us, it's every African nation. <laughs> it is not only us. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like You are looking at only Uganda. I am looking at the whole of African continent. And so if we are what, makes, what makes Rwanda now better? Because Rwanda is preparing to have a, a nuclear power plant. And very soon don't be surprised when the southwestern part is supplied by nuclear power plant in Rwanda. If Uganda 2030 doesn't have plans to increase the, the, the energy generation capacity, it is going to happen. You can doubt it or not, but we have an, a, a population increase. And that means we have an energy demand increase. Of course, the energy demand is going to increase. It's going to increase. Today, yes. we may be having surplus, surplus because there are no factories. There's, I mean, you just have to build five bigger factories and then that energy will not be enough. Yes, exactly. You only need yes. five we, bigger factories. We, we only need to just start uh, maybe processing bananas. You will see there will be load sh shading in all those areas. So that's what I'm trying to say, that there's no economic success, there's no, uh, there's no environmental protection if you make the costs of energy high. So now what you're doing or the, the steps you are taking are making the costs of energy high. The only step to be able to solve all these problems related to firewood, that those are cooking systems related to how people may be moved, transportation, modernization, and all of that. It is simple. And lighting and all of that, just build nuclear power plants. If they don't want to fund them, have bilateral uh, relationships that can be able to give you power plants. How are other countries doing it? Turkey has, has nuclear power plants now under development. Uh, uh, Egypt has nuclear power plants under development. But if you, if you think that what I'm saying is a joke, why don't you see the riots that happened in, in, uh, by the farmers in Europe between, uh, between March, uh, was it March or February and uh, April this year? Netherlands and France, I think? Yeah. No, not only Netherlands. If I sh the whole of Europe. I have a, a, a map here that shows you. Specialist in energy, Dan Kasim, hold on to yes. your point because you're going to take a break and the hot seat will be right back. KFM's hot seat. It's hot. It's live. Provocative and digs deep into the issue. 933-933-KFM. KFM. The hottest debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's hot seat tonight. KFM's hot seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. Welcome back to 933 KFM, and this is the hot seat. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is an energy specialist, Dan Kasiba. You know, you have opened my horizon to understand about uh, a little more about energy. And I'm thinking, could we, could the world, you know, you know, former UN Secretary General, I think it was Egyptian, Butrus Butrus Ghali, he said that the nations of the world are likely to go to war because of water. But it looks like now the nations of the world are likely to go to war are at war because of energy. Uh, you know, every time back in the day you would find maybe oil, well, before you know it, some people call it an oil cast. Make nations go to war. It, it has happened in Nigeria, it has happened in, you know, of course, in the Middle East, it has happened in, in Venezuela. Uh, and probably it's even happening in the Congo where the, the new form of energy is, is taking place. Could this be the thing? Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to, to let people understand you have to understand what is at the core of climate change. It is energy. So you keep sleeping, then they will keep taking your energy resources. So it's not that we keep sleeping, it's just that most people are not informed about it. So it's high time people start prioritizing uh, their nations and understand there's no one who's going to come anywhere to build you. 
For example, a bigger percentage of the minerals, I'm told, that are likely to power the clean energy of tomorrow, yes. which is solar and the rest, yes. are coming from China. Yes. And maybe part of it in, 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 in the Congo yes. as raw materials. And recently, I'm told, Norway also had discovered a, a, huge, a huge find yes. of, of such, of such a materials. Yes. How does that become, for example, a problem for Africa? So now the, the problem is, uh, comes like this. So you see, it's economics, energy economics. So your cost of production of energy or energy f uh, products, like let's say batteries, if your cost of production is high, then it means your product will be high. You will not compete on the global scene. So they have to make sure that they get cheap resources from Africa. But that, that, that is that instead of coming and establish industries here and they own them and they employ Africans, but they do not do that. So can we say President Yoweri Museveni has it right, especially when he his super focuses on building, for example, refinery? Because if you look at most of African countries, until just recently, mm -hmm. a businessman called Dangote yes. was able to build a refinery. Yes. Africa was exporting crude. Yes. And President Yoweri Museveni said his first priority, mm -hmm. even though it looks like nobody has uh, uh, brought in the money yet, was a refinery, yes. then a pipeline. Yes. So maybe, uh, does he have it together? Does he have it right he has in the it thinking? Right, but you have to understand that he's, the people he's battling are very, very strong. That's why you have to know. Nigeria has among the most brightest people in Africa. For all these years, they've been mining crude and, and sending it to Europe for a refinery, and Europe send, sells them. And they are, and they are accusing Lagos yes. people looking for, 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 for petrol and diesel. Yes, 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 yes. Then, then also from that, you also have to ask yourself as to why all these insecurities, like, what, what, what like, we have to know what the current events are. We yeah. have wars happening now. Yeah, the whole of, the northern you, Nigeria. Yes, no, yeah, yeah. We have mm. wars in the north, northern Nigeria. We had the wars in, in Niger until they were kicked out. Then we have also wars in DRC. We have wars in, in Palestine. We had wars in Iraq and everywhere. It is all about energy. So for you, they will tell you the, the climate change is a problem. So then for you, you refuse and you be like, I'm going to store this and do this. And then they will put sanctions on you. Because you refuse to implement the, the climate, what? The climate direction. So, that's, so there is this talk that, for example, a country like Niger yes. or a country like Mali yes. was powering the energy needs almost 20 or 30 percent of, of France or even other countries in Europe. Yes. And, and, and so if, if, they, if they, they cut the supply <laughs> yes. of the raw materials that power the energy needs uh, of France, um, yes. then, then that also becomes a, yes. natu yes. Natu yes. a national security yes. issue of Niger yes. and, yeah, yeah. and Mali. Let, let me give you a, a hypothetical scenario. So, why is Russia fighting with, with, with Ukraine? It is because of, like, uh, crude... Is it... No, no, no. Is it natural gas and all of that? Mm -hmm. So, now, which other alternative is there? The nearest, it will be Africa. So, which other country has? Nigeria. Then, where does it pass? It passes through Niger. Okay. So, now, you, you have to understand, because the Russians are Russians. They play their cards. The Europeans are Europeans. They play their cards. So, now, as a result of that war, you have a war in Niger. Then you also have a war in Palestine. What do those two countries have in common? Gas. Gas. You understand? Uh, the dynamics behind that. The dynamics behind that, it's not what they show you. It's money and politics. So if you're playing a game of saving the environment in the face of money and politics, you'll never win. So are you suggesting, Dan, that Africa and Uganda in particular are being used as a pawn in the, in the, in the game of energy and, 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 and international geopolitics? I, I think the ones who are being used as a pawn are the ones who don't want to research. So we shall be used as a pawn if we don't research. That's what I can say. Because I don't want to declare that that is the state now, because I'm not very, 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 very conversant with the state, but I have an idea of what they are doing. The problem comes when you have the people who are leading those institutions when they are not updated with the current events. So it means that you will be a minister and they will come to you and tell you we need this and we shall find it. How, how much, how much, now that you're very interested in yes. energy yes. and you're very much interested in, in nuclear yes. and there's a, there's a department to do that in the Minister of Energy, yes. how much have they done? Uh, I think they have, they have set preliminary preliminary like findings on where the, the scout actually there's a there's a uh, uh, under yuri is it yuri i've forgotten hmm. but under there's a 
there's a, a department that is working on a nuclear reactor with I, the Russians. I know, I know, but how far have they covered? Because looks, I'm asking this because I, I did. So, you, this is where yes, you, yes, you yes, seem I, to be. I did an internship with Rosatom in Russia about nuclear installation and all of that. You, so, you, yes. you didn't, you, yes, did. you did internship in Rosatom. Yes, Rosatom. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that uh, they will have to. Uh, it will the earliest nuclear power plant that can. Let's say they start now, 2024. It will come online maybe in the next seven years. But then it lasts over like 40 to 50 years. So if we are looking at 2030, under the United Nations agenda to eradicate poverty and all of that, then we, have, we need nuclear. We don't need the, the wind and solar that they are telling you because they will not solve our problems. And they are very expensive. Their cost of energy is too high. So it's not that I'm saying that it is bad to have them. All I'm saying is that they will not solve our problems. If you think that that's how you develop industries in Uganda, you are wrong. So now, with a, a country with a checkered history, a tumultuous history, yes. and sometimes still our, our, our democracy is still some kind of a some kind of a, of an experiment. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the instability because, in terms of war, you know, that's why the Ukrainians are scared about Zaporizhia because they, they, they're, they're, they're worried about Zaporizhia. Yes. You know what happened in Chernobyl? Yes, I know. Uh, and, and, and then we, we live in the Great Lakes, <laughs> and you know what it means. But, but any, any stability? Yes. I'm asking, I'm telling you this because mm. during the, 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 the war of the, of the NRA, NRM, yeah. someone wrote a book, I think it was the late Pecos Kutesa, yes. and, and, Mateo Chal, and, the, and the General Matayo Chalgonza, yes, yes, yes. that you know what? They stood on the other side of Nakasero and they are aiming at blowing the oil tanks of Namuongo. Yes. You know why? To disrupt and cause chaos. Now, if you have an instability in Africa like that, somebody who can even come and hit a nuclear reactor, I, I think a nuclear power plant, and you'll be in trouble. Uh, I think uh, it's just because we've refused to invest in research for safety of nuclear usage. It's deliberately made like that. They have refused to fund it because they know the moment you fund it, every country will have nuclear power plants. So what I'm trying to explain to you here is that what, much as you don't see it, but it is evident that Nuclear has suffered from just bad press. It has the least climatic catastrophes. They are huge, but they are the least compared to other. Yeah, but a small leakage, a small leak, a small whatever is is a uh, uh, could send. You don't, you don't need could that. Send radioactive. We're, we're in 2024. You don't need that. You even can use small. A small radiation yes, level. No, no, small. Could, could wipe out an could wipe out, wipe out an entire city. That that would be uh, the same that happens to all the nuclear power plants, like the big ones. Now we have small modular nuclear reactors that can generate up to around even 500 megawatts of electricity. So those ones are safer and they are not overgrown. Their cooling systems have changed. They are from air system to water system. There are many cooling systems. So uh, in terms of even nuclear enrichment, we can only buy nuclear, uh, nuclear fuel. You, you, see, fuel. you see what happened when a tsunami hit the, pop, the nuclear plant in Japan. Now, the Japan, is, it was a, because they recently just poured the water, they, 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 they're using the reactor for cooling system. Now, Japan is even finding it hard to sell their food and fish to the rest of the world. But then you have to look at uh, the, the global positioning of, of Japan. If, where was the, where the, if, was the if, nuclear? If, if, mm. if a small thing can bring high-tech Japan almost its That's knees, it. almost its knees yes. in trading with others, yes. what could happen? To a country in the middle of Africa no, no, no. with a small no, 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 no. Uh, with, with a nuclear accident. You're, you're still not seeing what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say is that we don't need to own these power plants. So these power plants can be declared as international no go. You cannot like in 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 in, 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 in events of war there's there are certain places you cannot bomb, there are certain places you cannot attack. You know that. You know you know they have been attacking Zaporizhia? Yes, they've been but who's who has been at attacking it? There's a war going on. There's, there's a war going on, but <laughs> yes. then who has been attacking it? <laughs> the, so, the, the Russians so, and the Ukrainians are fighting. And the, yeah, but then who, and, and, and the whole world is, was on tender hooks because, who, uh, who's beca protecting because it, who's by the way, it's, it's the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe. Yes, but who's protecting it and who's shooting at it? That's what I'm trying to say. So you have, you, there's, 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 there's that bad press that I'm saying that they tell you that these things happened and all of that and all of that. Thank you. But then the, the impact, 
I think the impact of, of with all respect, Dan Kasieva has solid a lot from Rostom in Russia. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, my producer, uh, Stephen Mbide, will open the line so that you too, you can listen to that. You can be a part of this discussion because I want you to have your say. We'll be right back. KFM's Hot Seat. It's hot. It's live. Provocative and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. 933 KFM. KFM's hot seat. Hot seat. Hear the real story behind the story. Coming right at you. Only on 933 KFM. Welcome back to 933 KFM. And this is the hot seat. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest tonight is an energy specialist. Is uh I, I think he's a disrupt of sorts. Uh, Dan Kasiva, um, and he's telling us now, we are having energy poverty because some people want us to keep us where they want us to be, in that area where we have to pay allegiance to them and we need to move away from them so that we can be able to have the energy that we need if it means to build nuclear power plants in Africa. We do not have to own them. It can be a business, but people who have the technology and the money, all we need is to have the energy that can be able to power our economy uh, but as you know dan as, as we wait for some people to be able to uh, to engage you as, as you know dan you know we were, we we're going in an area that uh, is more or less in a new uh, territory that many african countries have not gone into even those that have the financial muscle yes. and the big economies like nigeria the big economies like south africa are, are struggling to get into that the, the countries that are peaceful and stable that can attract FDI have not been able to attract that kind of investment yes. and never for and, and, don't, and don't and don't forget that energy powers the economy energy runs the nation if you don't have an energy of course you cannot move much yes. so you just have to f really go back and find out why is it that has been so hard so hard for countries that have the financial muscle and the political stability fail to be able to have these forms of energy uh, I would not say that why it is uh, the global south has been having these problems, not the global north. Mm -hmm. So it means that it's it's entirely designed like that. So to me, I, w I would, in fact, I wouldn't see myself as a disruptor. I'm not a disruptor. Me, I'm there to, to show you to the truth, and it is up to the people to choose themselves. But me, as, as a person who looks at the numbers, who has studied them, I'm telling you, you are taking the wrong direction. And it let me let me let me try to get some people online. I I'm, I have a call online. I want you to tell us your name and where you're calling from, and please make it very brief. But first of all, you're telling us your name. Hello. Okay. Hello. My name is Patricia Nantes. I'm calling you from Kampala. I lead uh, an environmental organization called We Planet Africa. I'm very excited that you've posted um, Mr. Dan Kasiba because we are both working towards the same end getting um, Africa or Uganda out of energy poverty, and I have called to address the issue of charcoal and firewood, because that's something that we are working on. Uganda is not deforested because we are not taking care of our environment or we are being careless. We have not been given an upstream way up from our use of biomass. There is no way we are going to continue cooking our food and eating if we are relying on our environment or forest so it's a natural result of our behavior and um what what we are asking what we are asking the west to allow us to do i know this language is very unfortunate but um you know there are the people who have who have blocked um all all investment in fossil fuels we are telling them if you really care about the environment you care about our forest you have to allow investment into, fo in, into fossil fuels, especially for Africa, so that we can move away from charcoal to gas and eventually to clean, to clean sources of cooking such as, um, such as electricity. So for, for Uganda to deal with, um, with the destruction of our environment because of our cooking, we need to stop using charcoal. And just to let listeners know that charcoal has a huge all bad, all worse, um, environmental footprint than, than firewood because of the process it has to go through, the number of trees you have to cut down and burn. But if we are going to deal with that, 
we need to shift our entire our Yes, entire I, I, I want to agree with you. Actually, there has also been that. a study that has shown um, in terms of expense, it is cheaper if you use, I think they say the cheapest is electricity, followed by gas, yes, and then that charcoal is even more expensive. I, I think yes. that has been discovered. The only problem is that um, electricity will come with some kind of an investment, uh, and, and, and so gas, you also have sense people, some people are scared about it. And, uh, and and charcoal can be messy in, in, in some way and expensive, only that people do not know that. I want to thank you so much for your... Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I think that you have somebody who un understands. It's not that you If you read the numbers, you will also agree with me. It is, this is no, no, the, 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 the study has been there. The study has been there. It's not only study. It's only about understanding how we are controlling this. So if you understand, if I, if I, if I take you to hunt, and I show you hunting means cutting off the neck, mm -hmm. and you start showing me that I should just maybe... Massage it. Massage it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so maybe I should only massage it. That, that, that <laughs> you could die. Yes, yes. Maybe you, could be, you, could, yes. you could become the so, prey. So that's what I'm trying to tell you, is that, is that you... If you start reading these things, you will differentiate what they're telling you to massage it and then that to kill, kill the, mm. yeah, kill the bull. So, so, yeah, but also, um, sometimes when I look, for example, what uh, our caller was saying, to use other forms of energy, I'm always questioning issues of briquettes, because I'm wondering, how much do you put in to produce the briquette? Because you may find that you have actually used a lot of energy to produce briquettes that you think, and you may think that you're saving. You see, all, all these things are small. They are, yes. Yeah, at small. an individual household level, yeah. You have to look at what... You want to go for big time. We are 40, 40 million people, right? In the next uh, 10 years, we shall be around 60 or 50. So that means that even the amount of fire... Right now, like you say, the statistics were there last night. 9% of Ugandan forests are uh, 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 what we have now. So even if you say you're using briquettes or all whatever, the people in my village... We shall wipe off the yes, forest. Yes. The people in my village, they will not wait for the briquettes. Let me try to pick another call online. And we have many Ugandans want to engage you. I have a caller. You tell me where you're calling from and please be precise. Hello. Yes, uh, this is And uh, thanks for the chef Patrick and the expert in energy. You know, my concern is very simple. Today, let's breathe it or not. Firewood is still the easiest form of energy to an ordinary sector today. Yes, gas is there, but actually, we have that plant that's too expensive. That's why today, most of the world energy is the very You know? So, before we, I think everybody is okay, but let's first of all reason how I'm going to plan for my mother, who's so deep in the veg there. So that the value of electricity is still cheaper than using firewood. Thanks for those things. Okay, um, uh, thank you so much, Michael. Michael still thinks that firewood is the way to go and is wondering how the mother in the village uh, can be told to switch to electricity or even gas. Let me also pick another caller so that you can respond to them at once. I have a call online. Tell us your name and where you're calling from and please make it very brief. Hello. Yes, Kamara, this is Juma from the Petra Nabat District. Thank you so much for serving the nation. Uh, to me, it is well. We need solution first. This issue of bringing, implementing things at the yet in the central here, yeah, it is true. Let us first value people who are in the remotest places first to be covered, then balance to end within the next state out here. We are always seeing your government plan first, start from central here, and yet the people who suffer most are in our country. I thank you, and I thank you for last time about the NEMA. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, our caller in there. And uh, so, d do you want to respond to those? Yeah, okay, yes. please. So, my brother, who's, who was a grandmother... Michael, Mr. according. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Michael, sorry, I didn't, I didn't pick your name. Yeah, I agree with you. Let your grandmother keep using firewood until we have a solution for her as a country. That's the simplest thing. I will not say that your grandmother... Uh, should not cook food because of the environment. Let me, let me, let me just, uh, uh, there are many people who would want to engage you. I have a caller. Tell us your name and who you're from and keep it very simple. Hello.
who had a, a take and go hitch there. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. So then uh, that's what I'm trying to, to say that now, if there's no forest cover, if we continue like this, we will not have forest. So that means the, the cost of firewood, the cost of anything related to cooking uh, uh, resources that we are using now will not be able to be met by the people in the village. That's, that's why I'm... Okay. okay um, let me just take um, the person I think has been trying to call. I have a caller. Tell us your name and where you're from and make it very brief. Hello. Hello, Patrick. Thanks for the show. You're speaking Sarah. Hey, Gorita. Okay, Gorita ahead, Sarah. Hello, 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 Sarah. You still online, Sarah? I please this have your say. Hey, I think we have a comms challenge there to get Sarah. But um, and in, in the meantime, uh, Dan, you'll also be giving us your concluding remark. Okay. So uh, I will have to answer the second question that we got. It, that is a, a problem of distribution. It's not a problem of generation. So mm. uh, starting with the people in the village, I agree with him. So but we will not distribute what you don't generate. So we need to first put strategies that we can generate electricity to meet the future demand and even the demand that we anticipate to have based on the developmental goals and targets of the government. Then after we know that we are under energy safe zone, then we can do everything else. But apart from that, uh, I would encourage, uh, I would say thank you, Mr. Kamara, Thank you for being the best host. <laughs> Thank first, you, KFM. Uh, it, is, it is my first uh, radio interview. I normally, <laughs> I normally like hide from these things, but it has reached a point where I have to speak. Okay. So now this is what I'm saying, is that every Ugandan who's concerned with the cost of energy should plant trees again. I agree with that message. Plant as many trees as you can because you're saving the environment. You are saving us from environmental degradation, not climate change. So... Thank you very much. Dan Kasiba, energy specialist, training Russia, Rostov. Thank you so much. Not Russian, <laughs> I'm feeling like uh, university. Russian trained <laughs> energy specialist, Dan Kasiba. Thank you so much. I can see you have a lot of passion about energy. And for you who has been calling in and for those who have participated, I want to thank you for the privilege of your company. And that brings us to the end of tonight's edition of the hot seat. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same station. Coming up at the top of the hour is Catherine Ageno with news. The hottest debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat covers all the relevant topics every week.